And the basic topic is, will the SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 disease slow its speed in the summer times? So for that, I had to actually look up some of the geography and, and refresh some of the ideas of equators and latitudes. Uh, admittedly, I'm, I'm terrible at, at geography. So please bear with me if I am, uh, um, hey, Jasmine, bear with me if I'm wrong in those areas. It's not my strong suit. But I did enough preparation for you to kind of have this discussion that will we have, uh, good morning, uh, Australia. So we'll talk about Australia today. So Chantal, uh, welcome. So bear with me as I try to teach a geography lesson and then present some studies for the, uh, for the concept that will the SARS-CoV-2, is there a potential for SARS-CoV-2 to slow down in summers? So if you are ready, let's start. I'm going to share my, uh, hi, Mr. Max is uh, welcome. So let's start. So the basic question is, that in the summertime or the tropical climate, will we have, so emergency shelter in place message, sorry. So good morning, everyone. So will we have the SARS-CoV-2 disease spread reduced or not? So the short answer from the studies is that there is a potential that in the summer climate or in high, higher humidity, or in tropical-like climates, the, the spread of the SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 will reduce. That is the potential. And so I'm going to go over the studies with you, and I'm going to go over some geography with you to kind of show what those studies are saying and what they found. And once again, my apologies if I am not good at geography and those terms. And if you are better than me, just put those terms down here in the comments and we'll be good. Good morning, Michelle. Okay. So with this, <laughs> let's start the geography lesson today. Walaikum Aslam Sheikh. Um, good evening, guys. I am going to try something really interesting, and that is the um, geography. So look, what happens is I'm going to go to to the world map for a second. This is from w Wikipedia. And it is from Crimson. And here is what is important for us to notice. In this map, this center, this central part is the equator. And this red area is the tropical area. The definition of the tropical area is that this is an area where the temperature is usually greater than 18 degrees centigrade. So keep this in mind because we will use this uh, information. 18 degrees centigrade and above or humidity of nine, absolute humi humidity of nine gram per cubic meter and above. That is it. That is the definition of this area. So it is warm area. There is one more definition that equate, equator, sorry, tropical areas are those areas where sun will come on top of your head at least once in a year. And imagine this, that if the sun is traveling in this, in this area over here, then a person who lives here, they may never get the sun on top of their head any time in the year. So if I go here and let's say if I draw this, let's say this is the earth. Let's see if I can make a good circle. This is the earth and the sun passes like this. So sun comes in every day. It passes. Of course, we know that it changes path and the earth is rotating and everything. So please don't kill me on that. But this is the belt. In this belt, if you are standing here, the sun will be on top of your head at least once a, a year. So that means if you're standing on it, if this is you or this is me, if you don't like this drawing, this is, <laughs> let's make this me. <laughs> this is not. So if you're standing on the surface and the sun is here, it will be at least once in a year right on top of you and your your shadow will be right beneath you. On the other hand, people who may be living on the other places, that is these places, sun may never come on top of their head. And so they would always have, they would never have a shadow under their feet because the sun would always cast a shadow on the other side. So that is the definition 
of the tropical area. So what are the definitions to keep in mind for our studies to, to look at them? The definitions are temperature greater, equal and greater than 18 degrees centigrade. 18 degrees centigrade, equal and greater, or absolute humidity, I believe it is more than 9 gram per millimeter per meter cube, not millimeter. So being a medical doctor, I look at everything in millimeters. So look, what they are saying is that if we take a meter cube of air, so let's say this is a cube and this is all air, if we take a meter cube of air and we take all the water out of it, we measure the water, it will be about nine gram of water. So that is the absolute humidity. The relative humidity is a percentage at various temperatures. And again, I, I don't think I'm, I want to go in there. Let's just keep this in our mind as well. So two things, nine gram absolute humidity and 18 degrees centigrade temperature is what uh, nine gram or greater is what is a tropical area or tropical climate. It is possible that those countries, let's say the countries that are outside of the tropical belt, let's say here, let's talk about US, they may still experience tropical climate once in a year or more than once in a year. For example, I am sitting here in, in uh, California, we at some point do get temperature of a lot of time, we get temperature that is greater than 18 degrees centigrade. It is very dry as well. And then when the rains come in, we almost get a tropical like climate. So definition of the tropical area is this, but other countries can experience tropical climate as well. And that is what is important for us to talk about. What we are talking about is that when the U.S experiences tropical like climate or those cities that experience tropical like climate will we have slower uh, virus spread there and i can tell you california has a slower virus spread it may be because we went into lockdown first it may be because of our population it may be because of the health it may be because of socioeconomic reasons or it may also be something to do with the temperature look at the new york side their temperatures are low they are not tropical climate and their spread is more so keep this all in mind. Good. I, I am so I'm so happy that I'm teaching geography today for a change. Good morning, guys. Hello, Janelle. Uh, hello, Krish. OK, going back here. So this is one set of things to keep in mind. Now, let's look at some of the studies. So here is one study. This study came out. Look at the date, March 9, 2020. And they say high temperature and high humidity reduce the transmission of COVID-19. So if I go back to the, um, I want to have world map here. So let's say this is the world map. Actually, this is good. Look at China. If you look at China, there is a part of China that is in subtropical region. That is meaning it is next to the tropical belt. And then there is a northern part of China that is in non-tropical region or cooler region. So what this, these folks did was they took about 100 cities across China, some in the tropical or subtropical area and some in the cooler area. And they, uh, what they did was they measured the transmission of the virus in these cities. And here is an important thing. The date range that they took was 21 to 23 January. Why did they do that? Because by this time, Chinese government had not started the lockdown and has not asked people to stay at home. So there was no intervention. Virus was freely spreading. So because the virus was freely spreading, they used uh, this time. Masood, thank you very much for your love. Yes, uh, Kelly, that is correct. That assumption is correct. Actually, there is a study, Kelly, from MIT, where they had gone over the, the travel of the droplets in humidity. And what they had said was, look, so Kelly brings up a very good question. And she's saying that if there is higher humidity, the transmission is slower. So let's explain why that is. The MIT study that they had done was they took a bottle in which they had, you know, 
spray so they could create aerosol with it and droplets with it and i mean we all have the uh, bottles that can do sprays so what they did was they sprayed aerosol and droplets and in the environment they had created various humidity levels so if this was a cubic meter of the air they had created various humidity levels and what would happen is look it is natural if there are too many vapors imagine these are cars on the road and the roads are jammed then the vapor that we have created let's say this is a person coughing this is a guy coughing and when they are coughing they are or coughing they are emitting the particles but these particles cannot go far because they are colliding with other cars the road is jammed and so the distance instead of 6 feet for example the droplet might just go to 4 feet so this is a study already kelly where they have proved with the sars cov2 uh, more of an experimental that uh, uh, aerosol and they proved that in the higher humid environment the transmission distance reduces so hopefully that answer your question going back to the discussion here so these guys what they did was between january 21 to 23 they looked at 100 chinese cities they looked at the cities that were if i go back to our map for a second they looked at the cities that were spread across china some in the cooler part of the china and some in the hotter part of the china tropical part and again the definition we know that temperature above 18 degree centigrade or temperature below 18 degree centigrade and their conclusion was the result is cons- consistent with the fact that the high temperature and high humidity reduces the transmission of influenza and sars meaning just like influenza virus and sars sars cov1 virus sars cov2 virus spread was also stalled in the areas that were hot and what did they measure was this this is a very interesting thing they measured 1 degree celsius increase 1 degree centigrade increase in temperature and 1 degree relative humidity increase reduced the r not by 00.25 and 00.1 0.0158 we know what is r not in our other discussions r not is the reproductive number and that is that one person makes how many people sick and we know that the r not of uh, coronavirus the sars cov2 is between 2 to 3 so 2 to 3 but they are saying that in the hotter temperature those zones of china this is sorry this is let's say the cooler part of china and this is the the warmer part or subtropical part they said that in subtropical part for each 1 degree centigrade difference there was a reduction in the r not by 0.0 0.0025 and by one uh, uh, absolute humidity by 1% change in humidity 1% change reduction in humidity the actually increase in humidity not reduction increase in humidity this is also by one degree increase in temperature and 1% increase in humidity the r not changed by 0.0158 that means the spread reduced that means the spread reduced and i can uh, theorize it i mean this is the data they collected and they said this is what we saw they didn't say the scientific reason for why that happened i can theorize that in a couple of ways and maybe my theories are wrong this is one theory for the uh, vapor or humidity and this this is a study from mit that they have already seen that more humidity reduces the transmission distance because there is just more vapor in the air and the vapor that is emitted by a person does not go too far now let's talk about temperature look the coronavirus is an enveloped virus now this is my theory so i may be wrong and if i'm wrong don't become too upset i'm wrong many times <laughs> so so let's say this is the coronavirus and we know that it is it has an envelope it has a membrane and we know that this membrane it stole from us and we also know that this membrane needs moisture to stay alive or stay intact 
So if you shine light on it, if you shine sun on it, so let's say this is our sun. And if you let the sun smile down on the coronavirus, coronavirus would very quickly uh, shrivel out. So that is one. Dryan Lowe, thank you very much. I had never known that there are folks who can actually give me, they are super chatters like Dryan is, and who can actually give me money for, the, for doing this. So Dryan, thank you very much. Thank you for the coffee and more. And so do you think we should have a hemisphere travel ban from the north to the south to slow the spread? I believe so, that we should work with the seasons to figure out that there should be some people who are, um, uh, some areas should isolate themselves just like we are isolating ourselves in our homes based on the temperatures. So back here, number one, the, mo the heat would shrivel out the virus quickly. Number two, the heat would take the moisture out as well. Now, moisture getting out would actually clear the way for virus to go be transmitted farther because now there is less uh, congestion on the way. There is less traffic on the way for the virus to move. So that is the negative effect. And the positive effect is that the sun has ultraviolet, plus it has heat and it's going to kill the virus. So ideally, summers or hot weathers should stall or reduce the uh, transmission. And this is the only study that actually measured that reduce by how much. I would really like you to kind of... Um, Keep this study in your mind. I'll put that in our um, description as well because they actually measured the quantity of reduction. So this is one. Then here is another study. This study is done, written on March 5, temperature, humidity, and latitude analysis to predict potential spread of COVID-19. So what they did was they also picked up, uh, this is also in China, they also picked up uh, weather data and the spread data and their conclusion was also, so look at this here. They're saying that significant community spread in cities and regions along a narrow east-west distribution, roughly along the 30 to 50 north. So let me show you 30 to 50 north. So this is 30, the end of this tropical region is 30 and 30. And so 30 to 50 is in here in this area. So they looked at that area and they said that the spread was has a significant community spread in the cities with this 30 to 50 north corridor at consistently similar weather pattern consistent of average temperature of 5 to 11 degrees centigrade which for most of the us we have that kind of a temperature as well so again what they are observing is this is what they are looking from the data this is not a scientific study of the virus itself. They're looking at the data and they're saying that God in the cooler regions, the and less humid re regions, the virus is spreading faster compared to warmer regions and more humid region, which actually means that there is a good news for those regions that are not tropical, that when they get the moon monsoon like climate, when they get uh, sun and when they get summers and when they get uh, uh, rains, they would also have a reduction in virus, vi virus transmission. Then there is one more study. This study is actually done in MIT right here in our, um, in our country, US, and it is done by Qasim Bukhari and Yusuf Jamil. And their study also comes back with this. this. They have a very fascinating observation. Their observation is very similar to the other two studies that the cooler parts of the or northern countries, the relatively cooler countries have a higher spread and high, higher infection rate. But they also made a proposal. They said, look, the people or the countries that are in tropical regions, they have not done that much testing. So maybe it is not really the temperature. It may be the testing effect. So what they did was they pointed out a few countries, these are, so if you see here, they are saying, nonetheless, uh, here, this is a very important statement.
countries between 30 north and 30 south. So that means they are saying countries in this tropical region. This is 30 north and this is 30 south. Countries in this region, for example, Australia, UAE, Qatar, Singapore, Bahrain, Taiwan have performed extensive testing. So what they're saying is it's not necessary that the whole region did not test. There are countries in here that are in this belt and they did a good job of testing and we can trust their data. And what they're saying is that their spread rate per capita is much lower than the countries like Europe and US. This is this is very fascinating. Why is this fascinating? That one, we can actually say that this virus could also become a seasonal virus. It may end up being a seasonal virus. Number one. Number two, we might get a break as the summers come around. around. Similarly, those folks who are in the hotter tropical areas, they might actually have a lesser damage done to them. So uh, can you send the link to the generals? Yes, I always put those links in the description afterwards. So I would do that um, as well. So there are multiple comments. I'm sure using Himalaya salt lamps will increase the humidity with further reduce the virus travel distance. Yeah, so there can be, may, yes. Then there is this comment, if the spread is slower in those conditions, it will still spread. Communal facility, absolutely. So now I'm gonna uh, stop the screen sharing and share this, look, spread is spread, right? If I'm sitting here and somebody's sitting at six feet or 10 feet or four feet, yes, spread is spread. So we have to have the prevention, social distancing, keeping ourselves clean, washing our hands. Those things I think would forever, they have changed our generation now. This part of the world, this particular time in the in the history, we are all changed forever. And our next generations are going to be changed forever. Our world is changed forever. The, the people are going to behave differently. The work is going to be done differently. The economies are going to change now. They are going to shift in their pattern. Businesses types are going to shift. Work type are going to shift. Uh, so that I think is a constant now. This virus may come and go, but it has taught world a few lessons that might persist in our mindset and in, and in our psyche. So um, thank you very much. This is what I have for today. The takeaway, so there is a comment here, but this would be similar to the 920 pandemic though, which lowered than research. That, that's exactly correct, Kelly, that this doesn't mean that the summer would come and summer would stay forever. The, the, the weather changes, it cycles. And so the virus may have a pattern of cycling with the weather, with the humidity and temperature. So that may give us time to become ready again and again. But at the same time, the weather might keep crashing into the world, into us with waves of the weather. Uh, sorry, the virus might keep crashing into us with weather. So this is the, uh, thank you very much. So very good. So Ram says that what is the definition of the humidity? Ram, even I had to look it up. I had to become a little bit more up with it. So I would put the link from weather service where I have gotten this data. Where the humidity's absolute humidity's definition is nine gram or absolute humidity is that in one cubic meter. So one meter, one meter, and one meter. In one cubic meter, one meter cube, there is nine gram of water. And as the uh, humidity increases, that is when the virus transmission reduces. And as the humidity reduces, the virus transmission increases. And one more thing to keep in mind, sorry, I was not sharing my screen and I was just talking. Uh, I'll just quickly share it. So this is the one cubic meter and the humidity one cubic meter and the humidity here. Now, what is interesting is, so somehow my system has started only showing the, uh, 
<laughs> so guys, what happened was my software that is doing the live has become a little upset and it would only share the screen now. So I'll stay with the screen and I'll just say this. Um, the cooler air is less humid and warmer air is more humid. So tropical uh, climates have warmer air plus more humid air plus they have the rains. So all of that makes a mixture of things that are slowing down the virus. On the other hand, the cooler temperatures and the lesser humid areas may have a higher uh, transmission of the virus. And as the season cycle in various countries, this behavior would cycle in every country as well. Yeah, so relative humidity. So I can explain the relative humidity as well. So relative humidity is something else. So re relative humidity is this. So let's say we have one cubic meter of air. So this is air, one cube, one cube, one cube, and one meter, right? One cubic meter. And you take for a specific temperature, let's say temperature is 19 degrees centigrade. For this temperature, you take the humidity level from it. Let's say the humidity is seven gram. Then you take the expected humidity, which is which should be nine gram for this one cubic air. You divide them seven gram divided by nine gram, whatever is that number, it would be somewhere 0 0.8 ish percent. So that is a percent humidity. It is called relative humidity. In the in the warmer, humid, warmer air, relative humidity is less. And in cooler air, relative humidity is more. Because in the cooler, something like, is it more or less? <laughs> you can do the math. But just remember that warm air keeps more vapor and cool air keeps less. So if we have, let's say humidity is 10. And if we have cool air and that is 5, so that is half or 50%. And let's say if it is warm air and it is 7.5 or um, 7 over 10, that is more. So that is what is the relative humidity. <laughs> so relative humidity is the humidity in a, at a given temperature divided by the uh, uh, expected humidity. So guys, thank you very much. I wanted to make sure that we talk about the the effect of the uh, temperature and what could summers be doing. So I would continue to have this discussion, but uh, I'll put the descriptions out as well. Possible. So Yasmin is saying that study by BioRx, we stated temperature close to 100 degrees Celsius were required to deactivate the virus. The uh, What we know is that 56 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes deactivates the virus. <laughs> so uh, if I am making this uh, mess with the humidity and geography, please forgive me. I'm a doctor, not this, but um, I'm enjoying this lecture. Most people live in air conditions. Uh, Jim, very, very good point. And that is also why we know that air condition is going to manage somewhere between 22 to 25 degrees. And that can actually allow the virus to live better. So this question that role of humidity is only um, with the virus present in the air, of course. Can changing the humidity and temperature using steam. So the problem is this, that we can change the temperature and humidity within our control. But as soon as you go out, you are still in the normal uh, climate. And so the, if climate is cooler, then people are going to transmit better. That's what these studies say. So yes, we can lock down ourselves. We have humidity or not. If we are in lockdown, we are OK. But as we go out, we may actually start catching the virus. Thank you from sunny Queensland, Australia. You're most welcome. Thank you very much from the sunny California Cupertino. So somebody is asking, sir, hi, uh, how old are you? Definitely older than you. I'm a Dr. Jim, not a geologist. <laughs> Kelly, that is. I'm also not a geologist, and I also made many mistakes today. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining. 
Tomorrow we'll continue with our discussion. I hope we are a little bit more up with the geography and temperature discussions. Thank you and have a good day.